be righteous, I want to be just, because the Lord has poured His grace upon us.
Thank you, God. Thank you for the souls. Thank the, thank the Lord for those who have ears to hear what you have to say, God, to the people today. Because this ministry is all about the Lord. It's getting, really, we're just vessels of what God is using to get his message across. And we pray that you have ears to hear what we're saying. You know, sometimes it sounds mean. It sounds harsh. It sounds... Uh, very difficult to listen to sometimes. The, the, the truth is difficult to hear. And, and the Bible says you will be offended. So, yeah. get, you know, yeah. it's, it, <laughs> right. the, the Bible is very offensive, you know, especially if you're in sin. And I can attest, okay, I've been offended. So, <laughs> but, you know, but Jesus said we in John have. fifteen we five, he said, uh, <laughs> go and sin no more. Or... Something worse just might happen to you, Angelo. That's right. That's right. And what's the worst? The worst is you're going to hell. That's the revelation I got, is that you're going to hell for your sin and for your iniquity, for, 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 for doing things that God doesn't want you to do, seeing things that God doesn't want you to see, hearing things that God doesn't want you to hear. You know, we have to guard our hearts. Yes. We have to guard our hearts with all diligence. It's very important as a believer to, to understand this principle so that we don't fall into various trials and, and, and temptations that, the, that Satan himself is setting us up for. He will set you up so that you can fall, that he can destroy you. John 10, it says, the thief cometh but to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come to give life and that more abundantly. Okay, and Jesus said, go on to say, he says, I am the great shepherd and I lay my life down for you. So, you know what? As our Savior lays his life down for you, we lay our lives down too. We lay our opinions, our thoughts, our ways, we lay it at the feet of Jesus and we say, God, have your way with us. Let us, let us be the, the clay in the potter's hand. Let him mold and shape us into what he wants us to be. But if we, have, if we allow iniquity and sin in our life, then it's impossible for God to mold and shape us. I love what you said, Veronica. Okay, that's fine. Wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. A little bit of... <laughs> and Viviana's going to like that one. Anyway. All right. So uh, this is actually going to be a part two from several weeks ago, guys. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for your prayers and for being patient with us and yes. uh, and for those of you who are on today, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. So, but we want so and, and much I just to wanna, finish. You know, I just want to say, I mean, I, I, when, when we got into the new year, I was supposed to be on, my boss told me, oh, yes. it's going to be just three days. Well, it turned out to be six right. days a week. Yeah, so in fact, the last in case I'm, you were wondering, Angela had to work m mandatory almost every day. Almost every day. In January. And like yeah, last night, even crazy. I worked twelve hours. That was crazy. Yeah. Last night, so in fact, I talked to my boss. She goes, "Well, how are you going to sing it?" And, and she goes, "Are you going to get any sleep at all?" I go, "I go probably not." But as you can hear, my voice is a little heavy. <clears throat> anyway, it's all good. Uh, but I, you know, I'm just yeah. excited to be here with my beautiful yeah. wife, and that you know, and she does look beautiful. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. I love the lipstick. By oh, the way. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is something that you said on Facebook um, to somebody, and you said, "Draw oh. closer to Jesus mm. in 2022." Correct. And so we were talking about um, practical ways 
to draw closer wow. to the Lord. You know, practical, practical ways right. that is going to get you spiritually connected to God. Um, so, so that's what we're talking about. This is the part two of that. And we t- talked about the importance of the word of God and its ability, guys, to save your soul. Um, I'm trying to find the scripture. It's James 1 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness Uh-oh. and receive with meekness the encrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Wow. So if somebody says, oh, the Bible can't save your soul. Uh, it says here, it is able to save your soul, your very soul. You know, if, if we Amen. put it into practice, if we receive it, receive it with meekness and humility. Oh, I thought you were going to quote my famous uh, quote. <laughs> no, don't be mad at me. Oh, be mad, be at, mad you. at you. <laughs> and I love what my daughter said when she was young. She you. goes, it's not an insult if it's a fact. Go, Vivi. Come on, girl. Go fourth grade. <laughs> well, well, that's her and I are right there. <laughs> Not an insult if it's a fact. And I love that. Guys, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, please don't. <laughs> no, but actually, think about oh, that for yeah. a second. It's not an insult. Okay. The Bible's saying it's, it, it's, we're telling you the truth. It's a fact. It's the truth. Yeah, sometimes you do have to come hard with the truth, and it really seems like <laughs> an insult. <laughs> But you don't mean to insult Come on, somebody. Mark and Norma and Rachel. You know, I'm sure we do that all, all the time here. So, yeah. <laughs> so, guys, ways to draw closer to Jesus. And I just want to go over the, we just did a, uh, um, the first few on, in our part one. So, mm-hmm. um, so I just want to reiterate because, guys, this is the most, imp- this is it. This is the most important thing that you'll ever do in your life because yeah. this is going to take you on to eternity. Yeah, you know, I just want to share you know, this. I just want to share this. More important. It's amazing what God does. Why I'm a little tired, you know. I'm supposed to be at my job working, and I wound up preaching for an hour and a half. For an hour and a half, this, this young man wanted to, he, he, he claimed to be a Christian, and he's a wonderful brother and guy, and, and, uh, and I clearly showed him where he was at fault, you know, with, as far as the scriptures go. And you know what? We're, we're not the, the, the Bible not answer an insult man. insult if it's a fact. That's it. <laughs> yeah, but we're not the Bible answer man, you know, okay? The God's the, 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 the Bible. It's, it's his That's word. Right. It's his okay? word. All yeah. we do is... Can... <laughs> no, what happens is, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people just misinterpret what God is yeah, saying, That's right. Veronica. Or they, they've just been taught wrong, you know, Correct. by preachers. <laughs> I, I totally understand it. And, yes, you know, we do. We, it, we've been there. We've done that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing how people think because you're a good person and that, mm. well, you know what? I have my heart. My motive is right. No, it's not. Your motive is wrong. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. And the Bible says we don't even know our, our hearts. <coughs> you know, God has to search our heart <clears throat> and show us what's in our heart. Right. Because our heart deceives us. Correcto. <laughs> but it was amazing because yeah. I, spent, I spent a lot of time with him, and I, I think he finally got it. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Wonderful, wonderful guy. Amen. <clears throat> All me. right, so ways to draw closer to Jesus. Number one, have a regular time with the Lord every day and do not miss. Okay, like husbands and wives ought to spend time together. If you, you know, marry somebody and then you just ignore them all the time, you don't talk to them. Right. I don't think your relationship is going to be very good. Yeah, and it could be anything. It could be a brother and sister. It could be, you know, <clears throat> mother and daughter. What it could be anything. If you yeah. don't nurture that relationship, right? You're not gonna. Ha- it's yeah. not gonna grow. <gasps> yeah. So, guys, some of you are, are just ignoring God. Yeah. And you're saying, "Oh, well, the Lord is in my life." Well, do you speak to Him? And, mm. and even more than that, do you let him speak to you through let, his word? You know, it's funny because he said, well, how does God talk? I said, well, yeah. God will speak spiritually through you. See, because God is a spirit. Yes. Okay, so the Holy yes. Spirit will guide us into all truth. So if we, if we pay attention to him and we read the Bible, 
And we read it out loud, like you say, Veronica, that's powerful stuff. Yeah. You know, that, you know, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, Yes, 17. that's another thing we said, <clears throat> read the Bible out loud. Correct. So that that reinforces your learning. Exactly. You know, and it also helps your faith. Yeah, and, I, you know, I yeah. share with them, I said, you know, well, you know, as you begin to communicate yourself in the flesh, but then you become, when you read the word of God and you begin to speak it, it becomes spirit. So the spirit speaking to God. Okay, and uh, so I believe that it's completely spiritual. So, yeah. and then what happens is like like the scriptures we were reading this week, Veronica, is that we get revelation because that's yeah. that's what God where God speaks to you. Yeah. He speaks to you through your understanding. Yeah. Yeah. So once you get once you read the word, and you sometimes you know we I've read scriptures, you know, all my Christian life, and was wrong. <clears throat> I mean, I've been wrong, and, and you know it's like. I used to think that way too. Well, like, when I, wow, God, you, wow. He goes, well, you haven't spent any time with me. How would you? How can I help you when you spend no time with me? You don't open the. You don't open up my word and yeah. talk talk to me. So how can I talk to you when you're not talking to me? And singing, you know, necessarily doesn't mean you, you're talking to God. You you worship, you know. And then you got to be careful what worship you're worshiping to the Lord. Is it you or is it? It can be part of your Ab worship. Of course it can. It can be an extension yes. of your worship for sure. But the communication yeah. part, what you were saying, but, Veronica, mm -hmm. even as husbands and wives or brother and sister, whatever it is, you know, daughter, father, you know, son and daughter, you know, whatever, uh, that communication is vitally yeah, important right. to the development of our relationship. Right. So and this is what we're yeah. talking about. How do yeah. you communicate with a God that you cannot see with physical eyes. Yeah, the Bible says you, can, you draw nine to God and he'll draw nine right. to you. you. You can only connect spiritually. Yeah. So you can only do it through spiritual means. Right. You know? That's so good. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are uh, like, true. Yeah, so true. when you receive the words of Jesus and you start putting them into practice, that's an instant connection that you get with God. So let, let's, let's, let's move on. Um, so guys, sit down, be quiet, open your Bible, read it, let God speak to you. Okay. Put your Bible in a place where you can see it every day. Number two, remove all distractions such as social media, TV, radio, turn off your phone, computer. I, yeah. I wake up now and I don't, and the, usually the first thing I would do is turn on my phone and I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is grab my Bible and open my Bible. So, you know, just you know, little things like that will just keep you on task. And I have to publicly repent as a father. Uh, you know, I would fall asleep on the couch and I would leave the television set going. Now, I wasn't doing anything but <clears throat> watching TV. And once you go to sleep, like me, I go to sleep, boom, and I mean, a, a nuclear weapon could go off, and I, and I would not, not even hear it because my snoring would be louder than that. But, um, but I apologize, and I repent. What's going on over here? I repent for leaving the television set on so that my children could view the pornography that was going to come after it, not knowing that it was going to come on, even though... It right, because you're talking about cable TV. When you leave it on, it's going to turn into pornography. Well, that's in what it middle, does. In the, the middle the, of the, the night. Well, the darker, yeah. the darker, the darker, the darker, the yeah, darker. That's what it's all leading up to. Right, the yeah. darkness. It gets darker and darker. It doesn't get brighter and brighter. So, I mean, you know, it's, it, it's just, it disturbed me when... It was brought to my attention that that was happening, and that is as evil and as demonic as it can be, and as a father, it's unacceptable. So that's why, Veronica, you, what you said is absolutely true. Yeah, Shut sure. that junk yeah. off. Shut, Shut up, the TV. Turn your TV which off. Which we don't have TV anymore. Turn, yeah, we don't even have TV, but, you know, guys, <clears> for those of you who still have a television right. in your home, turn it Just turn off. it off. Just turn Just it off. If you want to spend time with God. Wow. Turn off yeah. all these, uh, get all distractions. Because yeah. let me tell you, when you want to, when a, a man 
wants to be with his wife, wife mm. wants to be with his husband, boy, they... Oh, they shut they, the television they off. Shut every, they won't yeah. be distracted, but they're going to go and be with their spouse. And that is the same uh, uh, thing that we want with God. That's why God gave us that illustration of marriage so that we could be um, uh, on fire for the Lord, so to speak. So number three, this is, this is really, really awesome. Start a devotional. So just get a notebook and a pen, write scriptures out and group it. And we're actually going to show you our, our devotionals. I'm going to show you. Yeah. So this is mine. Somebody gave yeah. this to me. Um, and it was out in the garage for like ages. <laughs> and then I just remembered it and I was like, oh, I need that. And I just started, you know, just writing things down yeah. in the word of God and writing out, you know, if God would give me a certain revelation about scripture, I'd write it down and just certain studies that I would want to do just for my own personal right. use, because just for my own soul. Yeah, because when you write something down personally, then God it, is specifically speaking to you. And then let me tell you, God will, it, I will, I just looked at this the other, the other night and it just was like, it so ministered to me in such a time of need, Yeah, you know, yeah. so you can always go back. It's a quick way to just go back to things that God has said to you personally, because we all have, you know, uh, we all have the same struggle as in sin, as far as sin goes, but we all have a little bit of a different sure. uh, aspect. And you of know it. what? Here's, so, now, but I want to say this. What's amazing is, is God, this is the grace that God gives us. He gives us the ability to repent so that we can be saved. But see, because that, that was one of the questions a young man asked me last night. He said, he said you know, how, how do you get saved? I mean, he's, he's been, he grew well, up in church. No, he grew up in yeah. church buildings all his life and didn't even didn't know. Didn't even know. Didn't even know how to be saved. That's right. And that is the question. That is the that is million the, that is the question. dollar question. There you go. Um, yeah, uh, it's, in, it's, in, it's in the word of God. Sir, how do, mm, do we get saved? Exactly. You know, what Powerful. is the way to eternal life? Right. Oh, my gosh. And, and, and it's not just through John 3.16. It's throughout the, new, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. yeah. how you get saved and why, right. why God even allows us to be saved. Mm. But, I, you know, I just yeah. want to say that going back to the communication thing, I love what Mark, uh, he's one of the guys, that, you know, he's a, he's a brother in Christ. Yeah. I love him dearly and his family. And I love the relationship he has with his daughter, Gracie, mm -hmm. and, and Rachel, and, and his wife, Jill. And, and we were sharing how they communicate how they sit together, you know, because we, we get confused. We think that, oh, we, we have to go to this church building in order to, to be in relationship, to be in fellowship. And I told him, I said, Jesus said, where, you know, the, the word says, where two or more gathered in his name, yeah. there he is in the midst of us. So it's just me and Veronica in this house today, right? In the physical. But I promise you, the, the Lord is here yeah. today. Okay. That's right. There's other people with us mm, in the spiritual. In the spiritual, exactly. Yeah, that's right. So Absolutely. when 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 Mark and Jill are communicating together at breakfast, and I was sharing with them, I said that's a powerful time to not only confess to one another your sins, but also to to love one another in the Word of God and to share what God is telling you. And and, 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 and sh you know, iron sharpens iron. That's right. I mean, you don't get that in a church building. What you get is people that like to hide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it's good to talk about the word of God, but you have to make sure that it's with a true yeah. believer. <laughs> I'll have Hello. to say that. Yeah, because if not, you're going to get all confused. Exactly, because you know? here's the deal, because somebody who says, claims, and I told this gentleman last night, yeah. they claim to be a Christian, mm -hmm doesn't mean you're a Christian. Yeah, yeah. I said, just because you sing gospel music doesn't make you a Christian. Didn't yeah. make me a Christian, okay? I mean, I point fingers at me, mm -hmm. okay? It doesn't make me a Christian because I sing gospel music. That's right. If you're a sinner and you're continuing to sin and you're practicing it, then you're a child of the devil. You're not a child of God. So, and so right. again, it, right. it's, it's yeah. very important to get this. 
you know, and I hope this is somebody's getting this. I hope somebody's getting something that will yeah. help them grow in their relationship. I believe that's 1 John 3.10, I want to say. Yeah. So number four, ask God. Guys, this is, this is really huge, and I've heard awesome testimonies concerning this. Number four, ask God for ways to overcome reading disabilities or illiteracy. Guys, one of the biggest problems with Christians is Bible illiteracy. Not mm. just Bible illiteracy, but just illiteracy is just... Don't make fun of me. Yeah, No. <laughs> you know, I, but I, I have heard this from people who have overcome... They, they never read a book, and then all of a sudden, God gave them the ability to read their Bible. Wow. So, but you know what? You've got to ask for it. You've got to ask for you it. you got to ask God for no, it. No, you have to be willing and wanting and desiring you know, you to be shouldn't, close to people God. People shouldn't, you should not be ashamed of that. Somebody should not be ashamed. You know what? The teachers of America should be ashamed of themselves. Wow. Wow. No person should be ashamed of themselves yeah. because they have a reading disability or they just don't read very well. Sometimes sure. my reading comprehension is not that good. And I just, you know what? And that's, that's why I, that's sit very there, true. I sit at the table and I read, read stuff over and over until I get it. Don't be mad at me. You know, be so, mad yeah, you. be mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, so that, that's, that's huge, but I have heard such wonderful testimonies concerning this. So this is something that you just have to go to God and he, believe me, He's going to he's going to answer that prayer. I know it for sure. And Bronco, okay? see what see what people don't realize is that when we don't do these things that we're talking about, we're not being covenanted with God. We're not being protected by God. Mm -hmm. The enemy, mm -hmm. okay, we do have an enemy and he'll creep on in. He'll slide on into your life and make you he'll he'll he'll, he'll, he'll just change the whole atmosphere of your life when you're not paying attention to Jesus Christ. When you're paying attention. Yeah. yeah. Because it's so incredibly important to read, and we've said this from day <clears throat> one, to read the Bible for yourself. That's exactly because what I told that this young is man. One, right. Because one of the biggest ways to fall in a, into a spirit of error mm. is not to read the Bible for yourself. So don't settle for somebody yeah. else's interpretation of the Bible, even if it is your pastor. Okay? Don't settle for secondhand information. Even Angela and Veronica, you get, get it, the information for yourself. Get it for yourself. First hand from the Bible and from God. Yeah, because yeah. then that's when you get the understanding. Mm -hmm. And if we speak something that's not true, then you need to come to us and say, no, that's not what God is saying. And then we can talk about it and yeah. we can share, yeah. the, you know, what, what, yeah. what God is telling you. You know, that's how we grow in Christ. That's right. So, guys, here's another tip, ways to grow closer to the Lord. Get a Strong's Concordance. Mm. Now, Strong's Concordance only works with King James Version. Now, King James Version, to me, Correct. is a little bit challenging Fantastic. because it's old, it's old English. Fantastic. But, guys, it is the uh, furthest back mm. you can go. And what I love about King James Version is that it's public domain. There's no copyright. Wow. Okay. So it's wow, been, I wow, think it's wow. been the least tampered with. Tainted. So let's, let's put it that way. The word of God is pure. Yeah. The word of God is pure, but, um, but use a strong concordance. You guys, you can look it up. It's a, it's kind of one of those big books, but you don't have to carry around a big book. You can just do it on your computer. Strong concordance. Well, look up the word that are available, the words that are available. And it is the closest Bible definition, I guess, if you will, according to the original yeah. language that the King James Version was written in, the Old Testament was written, originally written in Hebrew and the New Testament in the Greek. So when you go to the Strong's Concordance, it's going to give you the closest definition according to the, the original word and the, and the culture of that time. So if we go according to our historical. culture, it's not going to work. Right. You, we want, it's good to have the historical content yes. of the Bible, you know. And but I, I remember I was talking to this guy because I have a computer program, and then I, I opened up this thing, and it needed to be 
Well, the company that 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 had written the, this program that I had purchased years ago went under, and, and this Lifeway Lifeway company manufacturing company came in and bought it over. So I actually got on the phone with one of the salespeople, and we're talking like fourteen to fifteen thousand dollars to buy this program. Now I have no problem buying software. That, that's going to help you. Like we have so, music software, for example. You know, you get Logic and you get Ableton. You get all these different programs that help you to create music. And it's the very most you're going to pay is like five hundred dollars for secular, worldly knowledge and 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 R and D and you know for, you know research and development that these companies have to do. But this guy came in. I go fourteen. He goes, but you can pay monthly. I Guys, you, you don't have to do that. No, no, excuse me? No. Uh, wow. wow. I mean... Uh, I mean, the tools are good, but God will provide the tools. Okay? Well, well here it is. I told him, I said, well, it, I'll just stick to the book. My word. I'll stick to the paper. Yeah, and there's a lot of free it's, it's, things, a lot of yeah. free apps. There's free... Yeah, there uh, is. Resources. And, that, no, but Veronica, yeah. I wasn't looking for... I told him, I said, I'm not looking for something for free. But I'm not trying to mortgage my home to get knowledge or to get have easy access to something that I need to know in you know when I'm preaching the word of God. Right. I mean for Bible commentary, you can make see guys when you have a devotional oh, man. you can create your own commentary. Bible commentary. That's exactly right. That's yeah. what we start, your start. own revelation of the word in twenty and in twenty twenty two, this is yeah. what God gave me. My Guys, own all you personal need devotion. is your Bible, uh, a, a King James Version, uh, you know, and if that's too hard for you, then have another a version, mm -hmm. and then your Strong's Concordance. Because here's the thing. The more, dictionary. The more understanding you get, the more excited you, you're going to be the next day. When it's time to, you know, to well, read your Bible. Well, think about it. When you get, be excited. When you get revelation, when you get understanding of something, it's like your whole world, like, where have I been? I've been, a, I've been yeah. a clueless. And all of a sudden, God speaks some revelation to you, and you go, what? I thought it said this. Uh, wow, you're saying that? And, and all of a sudden, it op it, I'm telling you, that's why the word of God is so powerful. Because it'll open up your heart, it'll open up your ears, your mind, your thoughts. Yeah. When you get in the presence of God and you start to read the word, all of a sudden these things start to come to you and you go, wow, why was I not paying attention a long time ago? Why, why, I just wasn't listening. I just wasn't, listening. Yeah, I just yeah. wasn't paying attention. <laughs> but that's the reality. Yeah, yeah that is that the is reality. reality. We're not paying attention. And the Bible says, take heed mm. lest you fall. So wake right. up and pay attention because you are human. You know, yeah, we're I, human. Well, I told this young man last yeah. night, he's, Matthew, it's, it's printed in my heart, Matthew uh, 24, 4. I mean, I'm sorry. It said, yeah, 24, 4, I said, God said, take heed, let no man deceive you. Yeah. All right, so this yeah. is number five. Guys, this is the best we can come up with. If you guys have any more suggestions on ways to draw closer to Jesus, please put your comments down because we iron sharpens iron and we all want to help each other draw closer to the Lord. Okay? So now number five, obey Jesus's commands. Okay, now how do, wait a minute. We're talking about how do we draw closer to the Lord? But guys, let me explain this. This is the number one way you're going to draw closer to God because Jesus is God's son, okay? Father God and Jesus Christ, the son of God. Now, here, here it is. This is the number one way to draw closer to God. Um, when you do this, and I'm going to show you this scripture, he promises to reveal himself to you, Okay? Drawing near, and you just mentioned this scripture, James 4, 8, hmm. draw near to God yeah. and he will draw near to you. So this is basically what we're doing, drawing closer to God. Draw near Correct. to God and then he's, he will draw near to you. Okay, guys, because he's already made you this incredible 
unbelievable offer wow. of eternal salvation. Okay, so John fourteen twenty one, and this is this is such an incredible scripture. John fourteen twenty one twenty three. He who has my commandments and keeps them. This is Jesus speaking. He who has my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. Mm -hmm. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. So in 22, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it you manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Uh, verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. We will come to him and make our home with him. Wow. Guys, he who has ears, let him hear what Jesus is saying in that scripture. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I mean. Jesus, not Iscariot, said to him, how is it you're, you reveal yourself to one person and not to another? <laughs> That's basically what he's saying. Right. He's saying, how come you manifest yourself to us? You speak to us and you don't speak to the world over here. Because they don't obey the words of Jesus. Yeah. So, guys, what did Jesus say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. I promise you, you start doing that, you start putting that into practice, let me tell you, God is going to show up for you. And I mean, he's going to reveal himself to you. He's going to manifest himself to you. Amen. You're going to get revelation of the word of God, and he is going to make himself known in your life, in your prayer life. He is going to answer prayer. I'm telling you, yeah. if you do, he's, he who has my commandments and heaps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my father. Mm -hmm. I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. I will reveal. God doesn't reveal himself to anyone, but he reveals himself to those who obey Jesus' commands. Even, even during Black History Month? Black History. <laughs> is, so hold on. No, I, was, I, was, I, was, I don't know where you know, my mind wanders sometimes. And, and I was talking to this gentleman last night, African-American gentleman. He said, it's Black History Month. And, you know, I go, well, I don't celebrate any culture, any month. I said, they give Jesus two days a year. They're giving you a whole month. Okay? I mean, really? I mean, I mean, it's like, where, where are we in this world? See, that's where the, see, the world, we don't, we celebrate man, but we don't celebrate Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. We lift up man, and we and then we lift up men who who've been persecuted and 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 beat and 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 horrific deaths that they suffered as a culture, and we celebrate that, but we don't celebrate the risen Christ, the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That should be we should talk about that every day, every day. So here's a big reason, probably the biggest reason, that people don't want and and to draw near just means to approach where people yeah. and this is the biggest reason i think that people don't approach god it really goes back to the garden of eden after adam and eve sinned okay and it's called fear guilt and shame ooh yeah 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 this is what keeps yeah. us that is the barrier that's the greatest barrier between us and God, our sin and iniquity and the guilt and shame and the fear that comes out of that. So again, drawing near to God, guys, all you have to do, Jesus said, mm. do his words, repent <laughs> and believe the gospel. That's it. Confess There's your salvation. sins to the Lord so that you can approach him. That way you can get guilt and condemnation out of your heart. Okay. So that you can approach God yeah, and be let, reconciled and, to him. And I hate to even go with this cultural thing, but I have to go back here to, because uh, if you want to eradicate discrimination, if you want to eradicate uh, racism, okay, which it'll never go away because this world doesn't obey God. 
Okay, in 1 John 4.20, it says, You say you love a God who you've never seen, yet you hate your brother who you do see. You're a liar. That's what the Bible says. So, I mean, that's very important information. I need to let them know because I yeah. went back and I, I, I shared something out of context from what you was preaching. And, and oh, okay. But, but, no, but it was important yeah, to me okay. because yeah. I want people to understand it's not about your culture, okay? It's about you and, you, and Jesus, where are you with God? Where are you with Christ? It has nothing to do with your skin color or your culture or your, where you grew up. No. Where are you right now in your living room with nobody around, no distractions, no interaction with anybody else? Where are you with Christ Jesus? Yeah. And if you are not, if you say you love him, and most of these people, they go to church every, every week yeah. in their yeah. church buildings, yeah. and they celebrate their culture, but they... But, you know, it's like it's like they take on that form of godliness and deny his power. That's right. You are so diminishing God when you put your culture before him. And I promise you, that's not going to end well for you. Yeah, or your denomination. Exactly. Denominational. That's what I be, be, Well, this guy said to me, he says, Segregation. He said, well, you're non-denomination. I go, no, non-denomination is a denomination. Yeah, no, we're yeah. Bible believers. Yeah. We read the Word of God yeah. and we hear from the Word of God. That's it. Yeah. There's no yeah. name attached to this higher place mm -hmm. church thing. Okay, there's nothing attached to it but Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You can go. You can go to many places. You can go to many YouTube uh, or what they call Facebook churches, and you know, and you can you can see various opinions. Okay, but I promise you, the only opinion that matters in this church <laughs> and in this house yeah. is Jesus Christ yeah, yeah. and the Father. Yeah. It has nothing to do with this. And I want to lastly say mm -hmm. this. Um, this is the way you know you are connected mm -hmm. to Jesus, to the vine. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that you begin to bear fruit what is the fruit of the spirit anger Lo frustration <laughs> misery no no no, mm -mm. Oh, no that's, yeah that's the, the book of flesh of yeah <clears throat> that's a byproduct of yeah, yeah, yeah. being connected to uh, of the other guy to the world yeah the other guy okay so <laughs> the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self control okay so faith uh truth righteousness love guys this is how you know <clears throat> you are connected wow. and you have successfully drawn and that you are drawing Nearer closer to and god. closer to god doesn't happen in one day well okay? like, I'm, 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 so, i just i hate i, I don't want I'm, I'm, yeah. i have to bring up gracie because this 13 year old girl spiritually yeah is drawing to God. Yeah. And because of the relationship she has with her father and her mother, okay, they are uh, being able to train her and equip her yeah. to know what is wrong and what is right. Right. Just, guys, just to clue you guys in to what Angela's talking about, there was a, <clears throat> we just heard an, a, just a mind-blowing testimony of a 13-year-old repenting <sighs> to the Lord. And it, it was... I mean, we we're just like, wow, this is the reason we do what we do. And it's like, oh, my God. That is a, an example of fruit bearing yeah. of a ministry, yeah. you know? And I, and I told her. Of I the said, word you know, of God. I said, you know, and you have this revelation <clears throat> and you get this understanding. You're only 13. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be trials. Mm -hmm. There's going to be temptations. Right. The enemy doesn't quit because you yeah. got you got this revelation and you have this transformation in your life. You got to continue to grow. You need yeah. to continue right. to seek after him, like Veronica, like we were saying. Mm -hmm. Draw nine to him every single day. It's a daily process because if we don't do it daily, daily. we're going to get lazy right. and we're going to fall off the wagon. Day by day, we receive That's our right. daily bread day, day. by day. That's right. That's right. Amen. Wow. A little bit every day. Thank yeah. you, Veronica, for preparing. <laughs> Thank you, guys, for you know being able to, to, to be open to be challenged. 
because we pray that this year that we challenge you in love, that we speak the truth in love, and what's love to you? You have to ask yourself, what is? Love is the truth, and sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it stings. I know personally. So, so my thing is, is that, but God wants you to grow. And the only way you can grow is to draw nigh to him. That's it. There's no other, there's no shortcut, really, to growing. Because we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to do dumb things. And so, but what happens is when you come to this place in your life where you're tired and sick and tired of circling a mountain and just, you know, getting the same results over and over and over and you're getting frustrated and you're getting angry and you're getting disturbed as I was in the music industry, you know, then you have to rethink your thinking. The only way you can do that is to, re when you say, when Paul said, renew your mind and your thoughts, is that we have to be in the word. That's it. So we encourage you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what your, you know, your particip participation in Higher Place Church. We love you. We're loving you to the truth. And we're glad that we're with you again. Until next time, bless you in Jesus' name.